five while you were in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're live. Lynn Vanders, oh, wow. Designer Diary, episode oh, number. This chair is less comfortable than it looks. This, this chair, Lynn Vanders, Designer Diary, episode number 46. So this chair here goes way back. All right. Well, well I'm going to get I'm gonna do this one in, uh, in style, yo. Yeah. Wow, what's going on? What's going on, friends? Stretch. Oh, man. Who's here? Who we have? Ramen. Ramon. Ramen. Ramen. Is it ramen? Like like the noodle? Ramen. All right. What's that noise? Oh, the coffee maker. I got the coffee maker yeah, going. Coffee maker. Right? I got the coffee maker going. We got uh, Rich. Now. What's going on, Rich? Rich and Ramen. A lot of R's. A lot of R's here tonight. I got to make sure. I know you invited Dylan. Oh, yeah. You was, should. He's nearby. He's nearby. Not Dylan's, not, he, Dylan's not here right now. He is, he is. He yeah, is. What a guy, right? Like. I talk believe, about I believe he's seen some old friends. Talk about dedication. What should she call it dedication depths by Dylan? That's what we should call it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He, I mean, look, he flew all the way here. Doesn't he's gonna spend the rest of the week with us? He he's just flew in, friends. he's here, he's off having dinner with a friend. He's gonna try and get here for the second half. Do you mind? The, co the coffee machine is doing his thing. <laughs> it's also overflowing. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> you hold the floor down, Josh. Wow, well, it went right over. Like nothing stayed. Yeah. Oh in. man, that's not good. It's everywhere. <sighs> Come on. Well, apparently some of it still got in there. I know what the theme of this trip is now. Uh, ah, taught insanity. <laughs> Terrible user interface. On Coffee every everywhere. Every, if it's if it's water, the interface has been terrible. Oh man, the, the yeah. sink in the hotel room we stayed in last night. It's got this really strange design. I've never seen one like it. It's a column, and it's got a little like joystick on top, and then a barrel. And I was like, you can turn the barrel so that it spurts water kind of in an arc. And I was like, there's no way that someone didn't test this, and that there's no way you can make it <laughs> shoot water out of the sink basin. But sure enough, we set it to the right angle. Pull the thing. And water goes right onto the counter and right off onto the carpet. Because, of course, the bathroom area is carpeted. This is, yeah. this is a great hotel room. Well, my mug has coffee in it, finally. Some. I am now. I'm some. I, you can see the steam rising up. And there it is. I get my coffee. Mm. <laughs> I'm sure top bidet. <laughs> Yum. Hotel room coffee. It's exactly what I need. A counter, you could, you could countertop a day. You can, you gotta show the video. You can literally sit with your butt squatted into the sink. We'll, we'll cross post the tap it to on, Lindander. put the tap on full stream. We'll cross post and it to And you can give yourself Facebook a hotel page. bidet. A hotel bidet. Let me, let me post it to the Lynn Manor Studios Facebook page. There we go. Well, Lynn Manor's Designer Diary, episode number 46. We're back. It's not a, uh, it's not a individual video. No stream of any one of us. You don't have to deal with having to deal with any one of us. You now have to deal with <laughs> dealing with all of us. There you go. I always came back from dinner. We were at this place called Bear Burger. Bear Burger. It's all about bears. Uh, not bear burgers, but it's called Bear Burger. B A R E. Yes, and uh, it was pretty good. It's not bad. We ended up having uh, dinner I think, with. I think their kitchen was a bit stressed today. Yeah, they were stressed. The food was. Um, Less good, perhaps, than we, it has in the past. We ended up having uh, a great meal with uh, – oh, it was an okay meal. Was it – what do you think? The company was what made the meal. The meal itself was – Yeah. So you see my I, – I don't like it. Last year we went there, and they make fun of me because I don't want to go there. No, it's, I'm with you now. But Barley's – I'm switching to – The I'm restaurant beside it called Barley's is like the place to be. But it's also loud and obnoxious, but the food is there, which is good. Food is good. But anyway, Bear Burger, food was good. It's okay. Hey, John. Um – but the company was great. We had uh, we had dinner with uh, Boda Manufacturing, our manufacturers. So we had a chance to talk a bit of strategy about that, and we had a dinner with unexpected guest uh, uh, Zev from Z-Man, old Z-Man games, but Zev from WizKids. The Z-Man. The Z-Man. The Z-Man yeah, himself. We, we had dinner with the Z-Man tonight. Uh, great conversation. We ended up spending a lot of time talking about comedy, uh, comedy shows. Yeah. And so uh, my question to you guys are. Now, if you check uh, our Facebook page, you can see the ridiculous sink, which I'm talking about. We shot a video of ourselves. No, we should share this to the screen stream as well. I can do that. Yeah, I'll do it right now. Right there. We'll share it to Twitter because, you know, many people still use Twitter. And uh, do we'll, they? 
Uh, do they? Do they really? I guess they do. We'll share it to uh, s- Facebook here. All right. Um, mm-hmm. I thought you had this all queued up. Uh, but no. I guess I, I don't know why I would think that because no. you've been super busy all day. Yeah, we've all been busy all day. It's been pretty intense. First, first day of a big con like this is always like, okay. It's just troubleshooting. What, yeah, nothing, nothing is set up correctly or working. Yeah, it's just, just, it's just, it's just it. troubleshooting.com. Um, the Z-Man, Tom Zenk. No. Z-Man is in like Z-Man games. Zev Schleichinger. Schleichinger. Uh, I've never heard him pronounce his own name. Slashinger. It's a Slashinger. I think it is. Is what it is. Sure. Slashinger. Um, yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it was good. It was good. I mean, it was it was okay. The the fries were really really salty. Like I'm got yeah, like cankers right now. That's what I'm feeling. It's bad. Like I'm salted out again, and we salted pretty hard last night with uh, the most disgusting tradition we've yeah, ever done. So Tom goes, okay, well. We have to do Buckeye. Yeah. So okay. Well, we let's get to this. Origins. Origins. We've come here the last several years. Yes. The, this before, is my third Origins with Lynn. Yeah. So before Josh was part of the team, um, Aaron and I came here a few times, and we, uh, Aaron Merch, the, the the late Aaron Merch, and we um, we wanted pizza because that was the thing we did when we got to hotel rooms. We we wanted pizza, so we we looked Drive up pizza. All day, get in yeah, late, you know, get a late night pizza, and we found this pizza place called Buckeye Pizza. And the thing about that's fine. Whatever. Kicking the table here. I just want some more camera space. No, uh, the thing the thing about Buckeye Pizza is is it's um, uh, they have unique pizza. So they have this barbecue or this buffalo chicken pizza. Yeah. And then they have this like it's almost like a Frank's Red Hot. Yeah. Base. But then they have some other one called white pizza. Mm-hmm. Which like, is it's like four cheese with Alfredo. For sauce. where we are in America, white pizza could mean a lot of things. Sure. Right. right? Um, but <laughs> so we ordered it. Yeah, it was like Alfredo sauce. It was really really good. But then we discovered that if you put the buffalo, so the buffalo pizza chicken is very spicy on the white pizza, it creates this like calzone. Yep. It's really, really good. And the good. dairy cancels out the spice. So you get the flavor of the spice without yeah. the burn of the spice. Right? And I think they've gone hell over the years because it, it's, really, it's gone down. Or we're getting older because I'm 40 now. And you're you're cresting into your thirties. I, I took much less pleasure in eating that pizza last yeah. than we have in the past. But we've got it every year, and it was like this thing to get. It was part of our Lynn Vander food. We every time we go to a con, we have a food tradition. But this was like, you know what it might be? It's just we had really good dinner. Yes, yes. Because in the past, that wasn't a stop necessarily. That's true. We're we're huge fans of Cracker Barrel. I think actually that started when I. When I started being the yep, GPS yep, navigator, yep. we're stopping at Cracker Barrel. And I mean, I liked Cracker Barrel. I've been there before. Right. Wow, look at this Ace Ventura hairdo. Like mm-hmm. this guy's. Um, what was the other one that we tried? You, you wanted to do a Ponderosa. Oh, God. Which turned out not to have aged. It is stuck in God, 1980. Ponderosa. Oh. <laughs> um, that has not gone well for them. He is here. I don't have video, but I know you are there. Mm. Okay. Oh, you mean you came out to see us, I think. I don't know. Ah. Um, well, but yes. Uh, yeah, so anyway, we... Uh, spend all- so last night we were like... We were the working. designer diary is alive and well. Tom is adjusting his hair. I'm adjusting my life. Um, no, he, the best part about it was is that we actually... So last night, we, we I don't know how this started. We were walking right. back. After having some drinks with some with Catalyst and talking over the shot around right. stuff, the origin story and, of Buckeye, and the origin story of Buckeye, and then we got to the hotel room and we were debating on when and how we were going to do this freaking pizza tradition. And Di is with us, and she's gluten free, so she can't have the pizza. Mm-hmm. And Kyle would have ate whatever, and then Missy doesn't eat it. Like no one eats the pizza, so we're like, should we just get it out of the way now? So we ordered two mediums. <laughs> because, of course, not doing the tradition is not an option. <laughs> uh, and so we ordered two mediums, and we ate it. That's, we that's each a lot of food. basically pounded back a medium pizza because you cut them in half and we folded them in half. And they were gracious enough. It was about 2 in the eh, one thirty, two in the morning. Two in the morning. They were gracious enough to deliver it to the hotel. So, so they delivered it to us. We ate it. The first bite was like, oh, this is pretty good. And then like three bites in, he's like, there's something up with this crust. The crust is soft. The cr- it's yeah. The pizza crust was like much more squishy than I was expecting. Yeah, it was like spongy crust. And then we're looking at the bottom of the pizza box, and there's just a oil. ring, a grease ring. Like it was oil. sitting on a bed of grease. Nothing but oil. Yeah. And uh, 
No, the no, no, it was fine. It was they actually, it was fine. It was perfectly good pizza. It, it was just very greasy pizza. It was perfectly the way it's supposed to be and yes. the way we used to eat it. Yep. We have changed. <laughs> I think that's the issue. Maybe we realized that we don't want to have outstanding Kickstarters anymore. So we've become better and better <laughs> in our lives. And the taste of this really crappy za, um, which is probably it's still good za, but it just wasn't. So he fell asleep right away and saws in some logs. <laughs> And I'm like, how can you sleep after you eat? And then I pass out myself, and I wake up, and my eyes are still. To be fair, this is not until I put in earplugs and a face mask so that there's. After, I'm dead to the world. Like, there's no way. He's dead to the world, but I can't even concentrate on the TV because <laughs> he's roaring. And then well, I have to turn on the TV. You wanted to walk, find something to watch. And then I dinner. and then I passed out, and like my eyes are still puffed today. My ring, I couldn't even get my ring on because it was like my fingers were so swollen yep. from the salt. So, designer diary. Um, yeah. We're, not, we're not doing Buckeye pizza again. Oh god. I, I think my head hurts. I think we put it. that one to rest. Yes, I think we, that one can that die. we finally let that one die. That was a, that was a farewell to merch pizza cuz he <laughs> loved it. <laughs> so the um but we have food traditions when we go out to places. We have like every convention we go to, there are places that we have to go eat. There are foods that we have to you know eat again as more yeah. food tradition and there's people that we should be having dinner with. Uh for example, Whenever Eric from Japan Anime Games and I are mm -hmm. now us are all in the same location, we got to go to Fogo de Chao. But there's no Fogo. Which Fogu is a Brazilian steakhouse. Yeah, it's a Brazilian steakhouse. And we usually overeat. And Fogo de Chao is 168 miles away, or as I like to call it, in Indianapolis. So we're dead at Gen Con. Yeah. Um, that's happening. On the drive down, Meat we. Meat comas all around. We hit Save Josh's your uh, wonderful recommendation. Which has become tradition now, which is Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel, because Cracker Barrel is delicious. Do you like Cracker Barrel? Um, what do we got here? La Rosa's Pizza is awesome. If you can find one in Columbus, it's a, it's a Cincinnati, Ohio thing. Mm. But there are a couple in Columbus, though. Okay. All right. We'll look it up. I'm I'm probably pizzaed out. Yeah, that's that's a maybe on the way out or Rolodex it for next year. Yeah, yeah. So La Rosa's deal. Your package just arrived. Oh, yes. So Shadowrun packages are arriving. Hmm. And cool. um, Can you move the mic? I can't see the chat. All right. You guys won't be able to hear us anymore. Shadowrun packages are arriving. No. <laughs> All right. Well, aim it this way. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. I normally put the mic on the cam on the, my laptop because I have two screens and I have my keyboard set up. Mm -hmm. But this is not a typical Tom setup. So yeah. we'll just have to accommodate. Here we go. Tom Zink. I thought he was dead. Uh, <laughs> Different Z-Man, John. You don't get to keep it because it's, yeah. So uh, for those of you from Shadowrun Sprawl Ops that were uh, interested in, in hearing what uh, what happened next, is we found out the exact number of duplicate copies that were shipped out. And it was 895. 95. 895. That's a lot of games. Uh, legendary boxes were shipped to backers that already received legendary boxes. Yeah, man, that hurts. The shipping alone is, I mean, it's a giant box that's like 11 kilograms. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a 12 by 12 by 7 inch box. Like, it's big. It's probably like 25 bucks, even domestically. 20 bucks domestically, at least. Yep. Yeah. So yep. that's... Uh, Not cheap. That's two grand in shipping. <laughs> right there. Gone. Uh, the cost of games, I know we know that, that game is pretty costly. So that's another like four or five grand in games. Yeah, easily. Or more than that. Yeah, easily four or five grand. So there's about six thousand in the hole just from that. Um, that got doubled up instead of spread out. Yes, it got doubled up. So PSI is kind of licking their wounds right now. Um, I don't know what the resolution is to this, mm. but I know that Lauren. Is, I know that Catalyst is very. Um, when furious? Uh, they're furious. Yeah, they're they're holding the professional image here very well. Yes. But last night in the hotel room, they were not happy at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of money, right? I mean, yeah, I think he quoted that this campaign is losing his company twenty to thirty thousand dollars last night in total after all these mistakes and the what it's going to cost to recover that. I don't. I thought that was. I think the figure was higher than that. Well, he said he said at least thirty grand. Yeah, that's yeah, twenty to thirty grand. That's not nothing. Even even huge publishers that you notice that kind of money. I mean, that would sink us. Yes, 
that would just sink us. We that, just, that's just another Albion's legacy. Yeah, we'd be Albion's legacy again. And it took us five years to get dig, dig out of that hole. Pretty much, yeah. Right? Yeah. If I do get an extra one, I would love to keep it. Buy it. Okay, so this is interesting. So I'm curious what you guys think about this. Because um, – I'm, hold on, maybe some comments first. Uh, David Villa asks, what percentage of total orders is that? How big is the print run for Shadowrun Scroll Ops? Uh, the total print run was 3,400, 3,500. They wanted an yeah. average of three or 400. So a quarter. Yeah. A quarter of the print run has been double sent. Canada's still getting getting theirs. I know that. Okay. Australia can still get theirs. A legendary it's, boxes coming I think my it's, way. I think it's the EU that's getting dinged on this. Because yeah. I think they opened up the EU parcels and distributed those. Right. So what they're trying to do right now is that is Catalyst is trying to – there's a good number of people. That's why this, this update we put up was saying that everybody who uh, got a second game, if you want to ship it back, there's store credit. We're going to try and find a way to get to get it so that way you can print the shipping label on your own so you have to pay for it. Um, if you are local to Columbus and you come into Origins and you bring the game, it's going to give you a $20 credit. I think he was throwing around. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on this one, but I think it's a $20 credit to spend anywhere Catalyst sells. Um, yeah. Catalyst themselves sell, not retail stores. Right, yes. Catalyst store. And if you bring your game to Gen Con, same thing. Yeah. I think they need to be coupable four or 500. Yeah. They to, need to, to, to avoid having to do another print run. Yeah. But yeah. they might have to do a print run anyway because now we have nothing for spare. We have nothing for replacements, nothing for lost packages. Yeah. We know there's a lot of lost packages because there's at least 15 lost packages because of the shipping conundrum that PSI did when they didn't update the appropriate Excel sheet. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. It just keeps giving. It's the campaign that keeps giving. Yeah, you guys are getting like triples here. Yeah. Um, I'm one of the folks that's getting doubled up. Second box arrives at UPS tomorrow. I'll take my five to six expansion out, but I'm not sure where to ship it back to. So don't ship anything yet. We will give you the options uh, as to how to ship things back because uh, we don't want people to go start spending their own money to try and recoup this if it's going to be moot. It's, it's really not your fault anyway, and you should not have to eat that cost. There are three games on eBay. Three. Just three. three. So somebody got the second game and is immediately flipping it on eBay. Maybe. Yeah. It's possible that those are people that just were Kickstarter speculators and then now watched more playthrough videos and decided they just wanted to flip it. It's true. Which happens. It absolutely happens. So we've got uh, Stephen Ramos asks, what about late pledges? Yeah, don't be that guy. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag, right, for John? <laughs> it's funny. Um, if we didn't uh, receive any tracking or package yet, does that mean I have to wait for recouped games or a new print run? So here's the thing, David. A lot of people actually um, have been saying they haven't got any tracking numbers or whatever. Mm -hmm. And every day, including today, I've got about four emails uh, in the last couple of hours. Every day, people are messaging me saying, I should have been patient. I just got my game, which is interesting. <laughs> but which is kind of weird, though, because, I mean, like, you've been patient, and it's a long time. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here? Um, I'm going to try and combat that salt from dinner. Oh, yeah, get some water. Get some yeah, salt in it. get some water. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Kickstarter, uh, Kickstarter for Shadowrun has arrived today at four o'clock. Another backer got theirs. Um, he owns a game store in Arizona, and he got the legendary boxes he ordered finally. And then he's asking about the five to six player expansion. So yeah. it's like, uh, yeah. So the thing is, is. Um, Yeah, sorry. The thing is, is that, that can uh, be a rabbit hole. yeah, I can't look at that. Or we're we're done for the for the show. Um, uh, what was that? People are getting their games now still without mm -hmm. tracking numbers or super late. Nobody knows what circulation these packages go through. Some of them just you know we deliver them and they're like the next next day you're getting them. Other times we deliver them and people that are closer than you will take a week to get to. Like, I don't yeah. know if they just go on certain routes. Like, they got a logistics chart that makes sense. Where... Or they're shipping out subsets of a master list in some order we don't understand. Probably. That seems more likely. Yeah, so um, we'll have answers for you by the end of this convention for sure. Yeah. They've been, they've been talking about it. We've been talking about it with them. We're just not quite sure how it's going to shake out yet. Yeah. All I know is that uh, anybody that brings it to Origins, you know, will get some sort of reward. 
Um, and if we can, uh, we'll figure out how to get the rest of them. It's almost like a shower run. You got to deliver the package. That's right. We got to deliver the package. If you deliver the package, you get your reward. Oh, we should have done something. That would have been a good marketing campaign for that. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. We got some new people it's watching. Uh, making lemonade. We got some new people watching. We got Jared and uh, David and... There was another person earlier in the feed that said that we can actually watch it. Mm -hmm. It was. Benny. Benny Pohl. Cool. So, hey, welcome. Welcome, backers and, and friends and fans of the of the, the Lynn Vander Shield. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to know that you guys are here and, and we're glad to be here. When uh, when you guys are at a right right time zone or whatever, where are you from? Let us know where you're from. Anybody here who joins the feed who's kind of new to the gang, and uh, or even if you've been around for a while, let us know. Let us know where you're from so that we know sure. um, how to you know let you know when we're going to be in your area because we, we do travel a lot. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of that, actually, it was really cool. We were in Big Bar Room Two um, in the Hyatt right beside the convention center last night. Oh, that's great. And. Uh, Somebody, somebody waved Tom over. We didn't, we didn't know who this person was, and they were just sitting at a table with some friends. And uh, it was like, you, "You guys made Albion's Legacy, right?" <laughs> we're like, "Yeah, Albion's Legacy." I, I saw the look on your face because you're still baffled to this day. You're just like, "Wow, this game, <laughs> this game, this, this ga game, this game, people, the fame of this game." People love this game. Yeah, it was, uh, it was neat. His name was uh, Phil. Yeah, Phil and there's, there was a, there was a Jacob. Yeah, there's a whole group of them, yeah, and they, yeah. they, it all played Albion's. And these guys are like, Albion's is notoriously difficult. It's a game full of red herrings that people fall people, for. Yeah, yeah, you'll fall for them. You'll, you'll you'll make some mistake that seems perfectly reasonable, but we know from all the experience playing the game that there are lots of really terrible ways to lose. Yeah, I'm, these these guys don't seem to have any of these hangups on Albion's. They I'm, just curious if that was true though because that's really it's, it's that's a feat to claim yeah because even that's they said they've never yeah. lost and albion's has an 18 percent win rate when you know what you're doing i can't no it's got to be higher than that no remember they're also playing only core game they're playing no uh, expansion content. core game is close to 50 50. yeah the core yeah. game is much easier yeah, yeah. If, if, if we get, if they played our version of it like the kitten caboodles with everything yeah, in yeah it, they, they'd get creamed yeah well, and oh, maybe they wouldn't. Maybe they kick ass. Maybe they're just that good. Maybe they. But are. they're super fans of Albion's Legacy, Savants. which is good. So with UPS from Atlanta to Anchorage, it would be within about a week to, with crowd. Wow, you just know this stuff. So John, <laughs> interesting information. We really hope that Dylan can make the last portion of this designer diary, because is that we found out that that uh, Catalyst had pulled a big prank on. Yeah. And we want to get we want the reveal on the video. Because it's it's a big reveal. I'm not going to give the reveal because just in case Dylan's really proud oh, and is watching sense. on his phone. What's this? John Hutton works in a mail shop. Oh, <laughs> this explains why he knows how long things take and what. John, we should just hire. We should just get stuff shipped to you and hire you to do to do the fulfillment from now on. So we're going to ship ship it all the way across the country once, and then no, it arrives on the West Coast. To ship it over to the mail shop. All right. You know the the mail the other shop the mail shop. I'm, I'm sure it's not another shop. Uh, so uh, that's just what we knew it as. That's just what we knew it as. What's that? Uh, so we've got. I got some cool things to show you guys real quick. I got some cool badges here for some celebrity guests that are arriving in the next day or so. Yeah. Amber Benson, Tara from Buffy, and Charisma Carpenter, Cordelia from Angel and Buffy. Yeah. These are their guest badges that we have for them. They will be arriving here. Amber arrives tomorrow night, so she'll be signing on Friday. And Charisma arrives on Friday, and the two of them will be signing all day Saturday. There's a VIP gaming event on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we've got um, Sunday also signing as well. We've got a VIP, yeah, the VIP game. There's also a couple – I think there's a panel that we're doing. I don't know what's going on with that. Yeah. Um, but we're also on Board Game Geek. Saturday's uh, Board, Ga uh, Board Game Geek Live, mm -hmm. we will be on Saturday at 4 p.m. We are going to be showing Evil Dead 2. Yeah. We're showing Evil Dead 2 components. Mm -hmm. So this is stuff that no one's yeah. ever seen before. Yeah, it's true. That's right. We haven't, we haven't revealed the Kickstarter yet. Because they, we haven't shown any of it on our feeds. Um, so it's Oh, a, my it's, God. It's a pretty game.
that will be live streamed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't realize that. And when we told Jasco well, today, they were like, to, yeah, great. To be fair. It's all approved. S- no, no. Uh, the BGG live stream is, I guess, it, if it is the live segment, they do some segments that are not live. This and one's they live. Them right? afterwards, but so, yeah, this is a live one. Yeah. So BGG Perfect. always streams live uh, at these conventions, and they're always like doing um, feeds and whatever. There, but we are literally <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Since you guys, you know, it's the live stream. Yes. Subscribe. Subscribe. Um, we could show a sneak peek on our part two of the designer diary. We could, because the part two is on Friday. So we'll, we'll show a sneak peek, and then you can watch the rest on the board game. So I believe that the box for our prototype, the, the box that we designed, is mm-hmm. not going to be the final box. If you're on the uh, hold someone accountable page, post this video up right now and tell people that they can they can look at it on uh, on this weekend. Someone. At this weekend. We all know who. Yeah, someone. Will Gibson. Um, but yeah, no, so we get, uh, so we get to... He's probably uh, putting his kids to bed, actually. Yeah, that's true at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Great things, Goose Fang. Great things. Yes. So we will. Um, we are showing a few games. We're showing. Uh, we were going to show Cowboy Bebop. Well, we were. They already have a live stream of us talking about that game, and it but looks they, almost the same. They want us to show it again. No, sure. no. We because now it's available. We didn't have a live stream of the game. We had a live stream of the prototype. That's true. This it it was. Game. It was fairly far along. They but yeah. said that we can show whatever we want at this con. Mm-hmm. But whatever we show this con, we we don't show the next con at, at Gen Con. Okay. So if we say Bebop for Gen Con, yeah. Then since it's released at Gen Con, yeah, we can, that's build hype now. We'll build hype now. So <laughs> we might not be able to get to it though because of the Evil Dead Two discussion. Well, we'll see. That that is a fairly involved discussion. Yeah. So we're gonna. Uh, so and then we have a second feed on Sunday, and I believe it's ten o'clock in the morning. I'm just waiting mm-hmm. for responses from the guests. But we have a second feed on Sunday. Well, we're going through Buffy the Vampire Slayer's expansion, Friends and Frenemies, yep. with Amber Benson herself. She's going to be there yep. with she's going to be there uh, with her special Tara card. We should be talking about what it's like to see yourself in a board game. Yep. So, if you're a big Buffy fan, make sure you keep well, we an can eye talk on a little bit about the process of how that got designed, how we got to work with Tara. Yep. To slay one baddie in your location, fight to slay one baddie. Okay, so special is turn. She's got some up magic. To two yeah. townies. On the apocalypse track and do wounds. Oh, she's good. She's Summer's residence all by herself. Yeah, it's all about the healing. I like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, with parts of Evil Dead 2 board game being shown off, does that mean the Kickstarter will be going live in the next week or so? Uh, we hope. We hope. Uh, we did talk to Jasper <laughs> today, and we are all waiting for Kickstarter. Yeah. Kickstarter is choosing a date because Kickstarter is. You know, endorsing this. Is that, mm, not quite. That's not the word I was going to use. I don't. Uh, it's weird because I don't know what to say. Probably shouldn't say any of this. <laughs> Probably not. No. Uh, Kickstarter they, is. They just, have been involved in this. They project. are. They are also on the altruistic heartthrob train with us and Jasco and the licensor, and they are just. I guess it, it's it's in the best interest for them to not have a crappy end to that campaign that happened before. Mm-hmm. So. They are, they are predicting <laughs> when it is going to go live and telling us when the optimal time to launch it is, right? Uh, because of their involvement. <clears throat> yeah. So that's that's what we're waiting on, according to the licensor, the publisher, and us. If it's all done, it's all done. Just got on. Did I miss a lot? Yeah, you missed so much. You're just gonna have to wait till Pack Self. He's from Pack so. There you go. <laughs> you can check out the crappy sink in our hotel. Yeah, oh my God, it's so bad. Uh, so Beanie, uh, one of our new regulars, and Jared, we got the new regulars here. Uh, it's really, really is the least they could do. I asked. No, no, no. See, Kickstarter is not a bad company or a bad forum. No. And if they go around and they start policing things that go wrong, mm-hmm. then it becomes a slippery slope. They have to remain impartial. They've provided a platform. If a company exploits mm-hmm. that platform, there needs to be other laws in place to yeah. exploit that exploitation, exploitedly. Sure. Sure. We'll just say that the bear burger is going to my head. Go back salt. To <laughs> when? <laughs> Past then. When? Just now. Oh, space balls. Space balls. Every time we go to a con, there's a theme. Yeah. This theme is space balls. Yeah, that one keeps coming up. I think it's we're stuck. And call the there. ball. Call the ball came back. Yeah. 
That's uh that's an old one. That's like a 2017 Top Gun plot twist party game. Uh, we filmed a playthrough video for that game. That's a party game where uh, call the ball. You begin your turn by announcing your pilot's call sign, and that allows you to draw a card. But when the previous player is done, they turn to you and say, "Call the ball." And if you forget to announce your call sign before you draw a card, you have to discard a card. So you're you're all trying to remember everybody's call sign as you're doing this while you're still playing, like basically, basically so, top trumps. Yeah, it's multiplayer top trump. Yeah, um, but. It, it became a, we, we had one person who, who was playing this this prototype in this video and he would consistently forget to call the ball. We would say, call the ball, and he would draw his card and he would get hit by this rule and go, oh crap, I forgot I have to do that. It's so whenever he made a mistake at all <laughs> in life, like he just Wait, yeah, he tripped said, on, stubbed his toe, he said he spilled was, the glass he of water. He said he was going to do something and it didn't work out or whatever whatever was the issue. We would just, the response was just... Call, call the, ball. the ball. We wouldn't say anything bad to him. We wouldn't be like, what are you doing, man? Like, <laughs> why'd you do that? We'd just be like, call the ball. And eventually just graded on him. He's just like, mm. Yeah. He's like, oh, I spilled my drink. Call the ball. <laughs> so let's see what we, we got here. to someone else today and they were like, no. No. Yeah, you said that to me today. Oh, no, to die. <laughs> to die. Yeah, because die, we thought die forgot something, so we just, we, she didn't know how to respond. Yeah. So we just wrote, call the ball, and she was like, no, <laughs> no, I'm not calling the ball. <laughs> so uh, Spaceballs, the board game, that would be amazing. I'm surprised Spaceballs, the board game, hasn't been done yet. It seems super obvious, doesn't it? It seems like it should have been the very first board game that was ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Spaceballs, the board game. Well, let's go look at that now. Who even has the rights? Yeah, we'll figure it Paramount, out. Paramount, maybe, or somebody like that. Paramount. Oh, maybe. Man. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. We've got a good relationship with them. Uh, let's see here. So, Evil Dead 2 rolling up sooner than later. <laughs> Does that push Army of Darkness back further? Who knows? <laughs> well, tell me how you really feel. <laughs> I, th there's no secret about the fact that, I, from my perspective, we finished this game a year ago. Yeah. Why do I... Why do I have to make another prototype for it this con? Yeah, Army of Darkness is is finished. Um, it's been finished for a while. We're all waiting. It's yeah. it's on Dynamite now. But Dynamite, it's not Dynamite's fault. It's Dynamite is waiting on MGM. Yep. Straight up. Yep. Red five. Standing by. Excuse my excuse my yawning, my contagious yawning. I'm relaxing now that I'm here. And this hotel coffee is really not doing it. Mm-hmm. Also, I'm seeing John uh, praising Cowboy Bebop in the uh, comment feed there. Yeah, thank you. MGM do space balls? If it's MGM, then we don't. The only thing we have is the ever so speedy Thunder. Army of Darkness. Yeah. So this is a friend of mine's art. His name is Alan. Whoa. There it's we go. Very pretty. Yeah. It's the foil tin that he did. I have a play mat of this that I use in Magic. So Alan's got some great art. If you're at Origins, go look up Alan. Alan Pachal, I think his name is, or Pinchal? Yes. You have to forgive me. I don't actually know the pronunciation of the name because it's it's a complicated spelling. So I apologize for the yeah. last name. But he has a game coming out with Renegade, actually, that he did the art for. Um, it's some kind of time travel, uh, not battle game, but like... Like deduction game? Yeah, kind of. But they he, they hired him to do all the art for all the cards in the box, and it's got that really cool like I don't even how how would you describe his art? It's kind of he's got this. His art like, is like it's like it's like fractured watercolor almost. It's almost like digital fractured watercolor. Yeah, his colors are very watercolor. He's but his so aesthetic good. is like pure abstract. Pure techno, yeah. abstract. Yeah, yeah. It's just like yeah, this is this would look like the cover of a really sick like cyberpunk kind of game. Cyberpunk or, or you know. Uh, dubstep album or something like yeah. it's, just, it's yeah. very like mouse yeah i like it or like uh we call those guys the brothers daft punk thank you nope i can't i couldn't get chemical brothers out of my head that would also be appropriate chemical brothers yeah you're right yeah i was watching on the phone and couldn't chat so i pulled on my computer i'm in linwood washington hey i know linwood i've eaten at the claim jumpers there oh so you're local to dylan yeah and i normally watch after i am no longer watching the kids but they are at dinner with grandma. Aw. And now you get to watch us live. True of life in Cyberpunk 2077. We have we have such a good 
squad of people watching tonight that we don't normally see. And yeah. some of our super regulars are here, which is just, this is awesome. Time chess? Time, time chase. chase? It might be, actually. I can is look it, it up. Is it time chase? Yeah. They announced it. Uh, I was reading Alan about it. Peckall, or Pe Peckall, I think his name is. Sorry, sorry, dude. We're, we're terrible at this. It's P E H, I think, or P. I love the guy to death. I bought his stuff. I will buy more of his art. He's phenomenal. Uh, yes, the game is Time Chase. That's right. And who is it? It is a trick taking game with a twist. You are allowed to travel back in time to previous tricks to alter them. Holy cow. That sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. Expected to come out in August this year, so it'll probably be at Gen Con. Oh my God, but I'm his, jealous. His art's on the cover. I am jealous. That's it. I was just gonna say it's a sexy box. Yeah. Oh, good looking game. I am so see. Yeah. You can tell it's his art. Like oh, he's got God, like, yeah. such a distinctive I am so style. jealous of that concept. A, t a trick taking game where you can go back in time to your previous tricks. That's what it says. How would you do that? Well, let's hit up Scott and see how it works. Yeah, we're gonna go, they're here, so yeah, we're gonna go talk. I'm to sure them. they've got it. That sounds phenomenal. Look at. Well, you guys better buy that. Support Renegade. They're a great company. They really they have are. yet to hire us, so they're not the greatest company. <laughs> it's not for a lack of trying. But they're a great company. They're actually pretty interesting. We, we have some talked to stuff. Them. We've talked. We're, we're parlaying. We we parlay with a lot of companies we haven't worked with yet. Actually, the the weird one about that was we were talking about doing some video work with them. Yeah, they actually wanted to hire for video work, which is crazy. Yeah, and they were, uh, that they, other background you have. Yes, my film <laughs> life. Um, they were interested in uh, getting me to do some stuff for Power Rangers, which was interesting because mm -hmm. we worked with the Power Ranger. Another Dylan disciple. Dylan disciple. <laughs> the Dylan disciples. It's not Dylan. Dylan's disciples. What's supposed to be the Josh? The Josh. I don't know. It could be a Dirksen disciple. It could be. No, the Dylan disciple. The Josh Jamborees. Sure. Why not? And the Gafton Goons. There you go. <laughs> or the Tommy's Templars. Tommy's Templars. The Crusaders. That sounds like a dollar store. Tommy's Templars is not good, no. Yeah. But the Gafton's Goons are. Yeah. Or the Gafton Gang. The Gafton Gang. No, that's my family. The G Gang. Yeah. The Josh <laughs> Jousters. <laughs> it's it's still not as badass as the Dylan Disciples. <laughs> Yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna top that one. No. Oh man, yeah, that Albion's thing was super weird. That that game. That game. That game. And they were ranting about it. They were. They absolutely were. And they were they they actually loved the first edition. Yeah. And I made fun of them. I said, "What with the silk screen dice?" And you were the only. I think you said you must have been the only people to get a copy that wasn't defective. Actually, I think what was the most incredible thing about the whole adventure was that. Yeah. I was like, wow. There was one. There was one, one that game wasn't, that wasn't defective in some horrible way. It was the one game to rule them all. Like, it was crazy. It's the literal direct opposite. Ima imagine it's defective because it's missing like a page of the rule book, and that's the rule that makes the game impossible to win. Oh, that's probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's like most games <laughs> have a defect run of 1%. Yeah. Our game is now proving to have a success run of 1%. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. We Maybe. Have, we should inspect it, because for all we know, he's missing half the tiles. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he can find them all so quickly. <laughs> he's just missing punch boards. He's yeah. just missing a punch board entirely. He's like, oh. And I must have been like all the threat tiles or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they're laid out that way, in fact. Oh. That is just unreal. Yeah, head note. All right, all right, Jared. Thanks for hanging out and watching with us. Mm. Come back soon. So worship at the altar of Lynn Vander. No. What's that? I don't think I don't think we're there yet. No, I don't ever want that. Don't be worshiping anything. We're all team here. We're like a we're like a unit. Yeah. The G unit, the the J unit, and the D unit. Oh god, I forget that. That's just lame. Just <laughs> Don't thumbs down, please. <laughs> Just thumbs up. Thumbs up if you think I'm ridiculous. There, there we go. There you go. The thumbs go up. <laughs> yeah. So we get like the highest rated thumbs up on this one. Knights of the round. No one is above another. That's true. That's it. Oh, my God. We just doubled our thumb rating. Thanks, guys. I yeah. know you love me. The uh, – yeah, that's it. We, 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 we never would want to be walking around and worship and stuff. And it's weird because when people do stop us and, and like, shake hands and stuff, yeah. um, I, I, I genuinely appreciate it. 
and I, and I feel we're, we're humbled by. I it. feel a little awkward because it's like no, I, and I think I think one of my go-to lines is no, 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 no. Thank you, <laughs> because without your support, we don't exist. Like it's like this, like yep. it's the it's the uh, this the the. the the algae and the rock, like they they, they mm-hmm. exist in the ocean for the same reason. So it's like it's, it's there. If, if we have stood, seen further, it's we're standing on the shoulders of giants. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. It's interesting. Yeah, that's a great quote. I like that. <clears throat> um, it only allows one thumb. Oh, thanks, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> but but hey, we literally just tripled the like the thumbs up go. on our video because everyone thinks I'm an idiot, which is great. Shenanigans. Shenanigans. So, uh, yeah, do you guys have any questions for us while we're here together? What, what, other, I mean, new, what other new stuff is coming out, or what, what else are we what else are we kicking at this this show? We have Angel. We're running prototypes of Angel. Yep, we've got some game. demo cards we have, we have yet to clip together. Yep, we got some promos for some Cordelia uh, promos. Car- uh, Chris yep. Carpenter design. Some Buffy promos. Uh, we've got, we don't, oh, sorry, we got most of our stuff is in the hall still. Yeah. Yeah, but we've got, we got IOD. This is, well, this is here. We've been running this, we ran this today. Those poor 3D printed miniatures, though, they're not going to survive the weekend. Are they all broken again? <laughs> they all break? Yeah, we told people to be delicate with them. And, and they're not? They're not. No. Oh, well, we should go back to standees or something. Do we have the standees or tokens here? We have one set of tokens for the characters. That's it. We should do that. As the primary, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What's in here? That's the second half of a half army of darkness I have to put together. That's why it's here. That's it from that. So, that's so we, have some, we had some scheduling issues at Origins with the amount of programming we're doing. Um, a few games are oh, hi, Annika. running Yay. with a higher player count than we have the number of copies to support. This is fine for production games where we can just take another one and open it. A little bit more difficult for a prototype with like 3D printed figures we can't easily do. Well, it's funny because we had, we had about two Four. more versions of the game worth of people show up to play Cowboy Bebop today. Yep. And we were debating opening our supply, but we only have 24 games, and we sold one right away. <laughs> so we were like, mm. "Yeah, it's still not in general retail." Yeah, and Kyle know. goes, "Kyle goes, that, that's fine." And he goes and he just tells them they have to come back, mm-hmm. which was which is nice. But I mean, at the same time, yeah. and the missus is here. Yay! The kids must be sleeping, so Annika's just hanging out. Mm-hmm. You know, super glue is your friend. You say that, John, but have you seen the miniatures in Army of Darkness? They are well, maybe you have. I mean, actually, I don't think we ever showed the skeletons. It's no. the skeletons that are dainty. Are they here? Yeah, you want to show? They're in there. There, let's show. Let's see if we can find some that aren't broken. <laughs> here, you look that. You look in that batch. Right. I'll look in this we batch. Just, we keep them in tackle boxes yeah. and bubble wrap. They will get destroyed otherwise. They are extremely. Fragile. So army of darkness. I'm I know actually surprised they put them all away like this. Wow, they really did. Yeah. They, they're all individually wrapped. No, no. So, so we're, we're playing with 3D printed minis that are like this. They are real. Fine. Let's see if I get some light on this. Yeah. Shed some light on the situation. Wow, my pasty white face. Yeah. Right. Oh, boy. Is that, is that clear enough to see it? You see it okay? No, this camera just doesn't Hold focus on. up close real well. Maybe that. Try that. Nope. No, it's your, anyway. your hand is causing it to blow. Yeah, they're, they're very dainty figures. There we go. Oh, we almost had it. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> This one, this one might be the worst defender. The Shambly Deadite with the axe. Oh yeah, this far back it looks good. Yeah. So these very, very <laughs> thin pieces, and they even they even thicken them up a bit for manufacturing because they were concerned about it. Oh wait, this, these all these go in yours. Yes, they do. But I got the witches and stuff, which have broken spears. You got any flying deadites there? I got a flying deadite. Yeah, show that one. That one might be the that one might be my favorite sculpt. They actually retaped them. Why did they retape them? I don't know. There we go. Mm-hmm. I feel like you that off. Be very careful with it. Yep. Yeah, this is a fantastic looking skull. <laughs> Sound of silence. Yeah. Hello, darkness, my old friend. There are four of these in the box. Looking good. Uh, this this game is not. I don't know when this is coming out. Yeah, it's. We I would describe it as limbo. Yeah, this one's limbo because there's a whole. We put that over there, yeah. We have people ask us about it every time it's, we have it with us. It, it draws so many like, ooh, I want to know more about that game. Yeah. And there's nothing we can do about it because it's uh, it's all based on MGM and Dynamite's schedule of release. Turn off the stadium lighting. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Uh, yeah, so it's it's 100% up to uh, up to Dynamite. They're, they're getting on it. But 
Evil Dead 2 will be out before that. <laughs> I sure. hope this is coming to retail in the fourth quarter. Yes, me too. Yeah, we all do. We really need to get this stuff off the plate, you know? Yeah. But Evil Dead 2. Any minute now. Any minute now. Any day, any minute. Like, let's do it, guys. Yeah. <sighs> It's Politics. just like the weight is killing us because we're so we're so done, and thank God we're busy. Yeah, because if we weren't busy, we wouldn't know. It. Wow, look at that! It's like Kramer. Yeah. What else here? Does Dylan have any plans to make Shadowrun minis game? Because that would be awesome. Well, there's minis at the con this year. They released a six pack of those minis that we were going to put into takedown. So really, now, so you know what's good about that? We don't. No. Have, we can make new minis. Sure. Did you not see it? I didn't realize they released it. They got sixth sixth world stuff there. They got the beginners oh, box, and they got a six pack of minis you can buy, but the generic sculpts, generic minis. It's like an orc street samurai. There's that rigger that has like the floating. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they released those minis for sale. They're in little bundle packages. Well, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those were supposed to be in takedown. They were supposed to be in takedown. I guess Lauren got greedy. Yeah, I changed plans. He's like, he's like, I want to tell you everything I do. I'm like, okay, but thanks, if, business partner. But if you wanted us to make this game <laughs> and be the first minis to market, why would you jump the gun and screw us like that? No. That's okay. We're gonna do so many more. That's okay. PSI got them good. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna stew on that one for a bit. Uh, see here, maybe it's too early, but have you made any plans for expansions to Evil Dead Two or AOD? Uh, so we have. A totally designed, ready for manufacturing core game for Army of Darkness. We designed a bunch of stretch goal content for it, um, which may or may not see the light of day, depending on whether it's a Kickstarter. Um, so we'll see. Somebody asked a question. Evil Dead 2 is going to be a little bit different because Evil Dead 2, uh, because we're fulfilling old games, uh, replacement games for the early Kickstarter, it's not going to have the structure of a typical Kickstarter. It's not going to have a ton of stretch goals or a ton of expansions. Um, that Kickstarter is singularly focused on let's fund it so that everybody gets this version of the game. Uh, that being said, some of the stuff in our Evil Dead 2 game was originally uh, stretch goal content. Um, our Evil Dead 2 game has Applehead, the rotten Applehead. Yeah, game. we've got a bunch of stretch goal content. It's got, two, it's got two arms that are coming out of the ground, and then it's got a head that's bursting through the door, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a big mini too. It's like two and a half inches tall, and like a cube. It's great. Yeah, we'll answer your question. I will answer <clears> now. So Daniel asked a question earlier in the feed about uh, the particular plan Catalyst is leaning toward with regards to people who send their extra legendary boxes back. Right. Yeah, there is a plan. It's not solidified yet because there's a lot of people <laughs> weighing in on it. Uh, they've got the whole team kind of talking about it. But they're us. they're putting out a bounty on those packages. So I if you want to run them back to Origins or Gen Con. Yeah, and I believe he's even going to give credit. a web credit for his store yeah. if, if you ship them back. That's yeah. that's what I believe it's going to be. We're we're deciding on the on the severity of it. We're trying to figure mm -hmm. out um, what it's going to do to them, but they 100% will put a bounty on your game. So mm -hmm. you you ship it back or you drive it to us. Um, you get money. You'll get something for it. It'll be a credit of some sort to buy some cool stuff in the Shadowrun store. Which is still pretty good. It's like it's like cash, but you get to buy more catalyst product. So that's that's what's gonna happen. So yeah. But they will they will not just expect you to out of pocket at the very least send your send the game back to us or deal with those consequences. They they want they want yeah. yeah. Jared says uh, I'm extremely excited for this Evil Dead 2 preview and uh, to see the improved gameplay. Oh well, yeah. it's a brand new game. Brand new. But we kept the same overall concept. Yeah. And Streamlined, condensed, at a, developed it further. Yeah, at a core, it's it's still what you what you want. But you know, at a non core, it's because it's a game about. It's a game actually, about nothing. No, yeah, that's, it's, that's it's really not. No. Um, at its core, it, the the original concept for the game was very much a just like the film. You're in the cabin. Uh, you've got to close the Necronomicon or use the Necronomicon to close the the portal to hell or whatever it is. Yeah, she uh, turned deadite, uh, but you don't turn back. Right. So now it's more of a the, the layer we added. We changed the core mechanics a bit to streamline them, um, and we added a whole mechanic with hidden hidden roles. So throughout the game, as you you start off, where one person may or may not be a deadite, but as you're playing the game and you take wounds from deadites, 
you gather corruption, which means you're slowly over the course of the game being dealt additional chances to turn evil. Um, and some percentage of the players by the end of the game can become evil. And if you deal out the entire deck of corruption cards, everyone loses. The game is, or sorry, the, any of the dead egg players win. All the humans lose. So now there's a couple of, um, there's some very interesting moments where you're all kind of, at the beginning, seems like you're working together. You're scattering around the cabin, getting all the items, making sure that you're all kind of loaded out to battle the, the scarier monsters that come out, like um, Henrietta and so on. Looking but you're adult. never quite sure when people are grabbing items if they're on your team or not. Because someone someone might be a deadite and someone might... Sometimes you have two deadites off the bat. We we filmed the gameplay video for it where we ended up with some, some interesting teams as a result of the corruption mechanic. Um, but the, the, the core piece there is that all of the items you can gather are tokens, which are seated face down on mm -hmm. the board. So whenever a character goes to an area and searches there, that player alone picks up the pile of item tokens, chooses one, reveals it, and takes it, and they put it on their little player map, and the rest go back face down. Now, items are like all the various weapons you can have, but they're also pages of the Necronomicon that have been scattered, so you need to find them. But you got to be careful about who's holding how many pages because you get bonus abilities for holding them. You can it's cast correct. powerful spells that let you take extra turns. Or but if you cast the spells, there's a chance. The more powerful the spell, that you the higher chance is you're going to corrupt and turn to a deadite. So yeah. it's kind of a really crazy push pull kind of like mechanic. Yeah. Or, it's or, so so it's a zero it's a zero to many hidden trader game. Yeah, yeah. As you get corrupted. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. The hidden when you watch the playthrough video when we when we actually release it. Because right now the playthrough video is uh, yeah. is on the Kickstarter page, which hasn't been obviously public. But yeah. uh, when you watch the video, you get to see us playing, and it's like Josh and I versus Die and uh, and Will and Will, Will, Will Gibson. Gibson. And it was crazy because what we did is we all, whenever somebody got a corruption card, everybody else would look away, and we put the corruption card up to the camera so you can actually see where whether we're dead eyed or not. And so it's yeah, like, it that got, was that was a really fun video. It to got shoot. pretty nuts. Yeah, we won. Team Lavander, Team Lavander, the non-banders, the non-banders. Um, oh. But yeah, so I think the the biggest thing that mechanic and the tightening of the game and and how quickly you pick up all the tokens um, makes a game that's much faster and tighter than the original design. Mm -hmm. uh, I think our game plays yeah, pretty it's, it's, it's like forty five minutes, like it's a. It's a fast, awesome little game. Yeah, we ran through two two runs of it today in two hours. Two different groups. E Evil Dead? No, you're talking Army of Darkness. So it's, it's also fast. Ar Ar Army of Darkness is I'll also be fast over here. because it has a real-time mechanic. Um, get back here. Otherwise, you're now revealing the lovely yellow coat. Get over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I'm trying to stay on the phone because that my phone turned off. Dylan, he hasn't even seen the message yet. Of course not. Poor Dylan. He's out having dinner, enjoying the company. Of his well, friends. if he hasn't seen the message yet, that means he's not watching the uh, the feed. Oh well. <laughs> no, I mean it's good. Get him. We'll get him on part two. Yeah, we'll get him. Oh, on probably, part. Oh, he'll, he'll, know, probably, he'll know. He'll know before, before then. then. Yeah. The, the the joke is is quite interesting. Yeah, we'll we'll flip that one. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so I'm I'm very happy with Evil Dead Two. Um, Dylan was kind of the the lead charge on on designing it. He uh, he he came up with the whole hidden hidden uh, roles thing because the, the hidden roles thing really is it's it it really makes the game. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm a fan of the Battlestar Galactica board game, and that's another one that's that's a big long heavy game with hidden roles. And my problem with that game was always I wanted the payoff of the hidden roles to be shorter. Yeah, but something like Resistance or Werewolf, where the hidden roles are too short and there's not enough to them. This is like a good medium weight hidden roll game. I think you were saying it's a little bit like Shadows Over Camelot that way. Oh, the, the hidden roll? Yeah. So I was, I was reading the comments. Yeah, but you were saying because like Shadows Over Camelot's not a overly long game. Oh, Shadows Over Camelot can be a it long can game. Be. Yeah. The Evil Dead Two can't be. It just because the deadite pressure is so crazy on the board, yeah. That it's just you like, have it's to like get all the it's items. like one, two, five, ten, twenty. Whoa, whoa, yeah. Right? Like you gotta you start shotgunning yeah. them and stuff. And the worst is when someone gets a corruption card because you're like, I don't know if they're a deadite. 
or they, not. They seemed like they were gathering pages to hand them to me <laughs> on my team. Instead of but just, they may have just changed teams. Yes. Like we we could plan out a strategy on how we're gonna pull this off. Yeah. And we're dosy doing on the board, grabbing grabbing items and stuff. And then all of a sudden, like in Patrol at the house on the Haunted Hill, all of a sudden yeah. he's the haunt. And but I won't yeah. know this until it's revealed in some capacity or form. Yeah. If I choose to turn and attack him. Yeah. One of our earliest play tests was uh we, we kept suspecting somebody was a deadite player, and we had two players who were working together in an area. And um, when the deadite player realized that the writing was probably on the wall, they immediately they were carrying the chainsaw. So they immediately revealed that they were a deadite and just cut down one of the other players. <laughs> just like, no, you don't get a turn. <laughs> uh, done. And then that player was... Well, it didn't matter at that point because the game was the basically yeah. over. But yeah, your characters don't die if you're deadites you respawn and if you're humans you retreat back into the house and lose some gear yeah um what we do have here is i can't really show you without giving away that prank show the back yeah I'll show the back is we've got the uh, we sexy got retail version the retail version of sprawl ops. i that, really like this art that is here yeah so did only... they have did they have this art done for this box or is it a photoshop of something else you know, I really, you I really... know i've never seen it. it it's it's these guys are playing sprawl ops yeah it's awesome <laughs> There's this guy hanging out back here. They're actually playing Sprawl Ops. Oh, there there we go. go. Get rid of the glare. Get rid of the glare. It's a great box back. <laughs> so this is the retail copy. They're playing Sprawl Ops. I actually think this is a Photoshop job. I think they took some existing art and put a table in front of them. Well, we should ask Dak. We should. we got to have him on at some point. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, you were saying you'd love to have Dak on. Yeah. Actually, I should just start making a list of artists in the industry I want to interview. Quan Chai would be really cool. Who's Quan Chai? Quan Chai Moria. He did that, a whole bunch of... Um, that's the front of the box. He's pretty famous. Quan Chai. That's interesting. So Sprawl Offs is the way to do it. Yeah, look at this. Delicious box. Yeah. That's the retail box there. <laughs> I was imagining the dogs playing poker picture except playing Sprawl Offs. Russell Mallow says, mm -hmm. I have summoned Dak. Whoa. It's Dak. Cool. <laughs> Dak, did you just like. <laughs> there we go. Hey, we got him. So, Dak, we <laughs> haven't. Summoned Dak success. We haven't given it. In. Oh, I, was, I wasn't logged in. Oh, okay. There you so, go. So, Dak. Um, the front of the box, we can't say anything about it right now, but like, were you part of that? <laughs> were you part of that, that prank? Because Dylan, oh yeah. There we go. Okay. You had to have been. You had to have been. Okay, that's fine. We didn't know about that either. So yeah. when we found out about it, against my will to a great degree. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so Dylan still has no clue. So we are we were hoping that he would show up here. Yeah. He still might because we're, we're going to – He's just got to see what time it is. And... But, yeah, seriously, Dak, the back of the box is amazing. I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the back. So he, he said, it's, it's seamless. Like, it's, here, three piece, it's, it's three pieces of art. I'm going to keep checking for Dylan. That, that Dak is stitched together, and they look totally natural like they should be. Oh, so he, so he stitched those together. Yeah, they're three separate character pieces that he just stuck together. And put a table under them so it looks like they're playing a board game. The box back in which is very early on. Interesting. Yeah, that's great though. So you saw my responses on the video about it, and you were pretty. Yeah, that's right. So for all of you out there watching, there's some stuff going on. I don't want to give it away just in case Dylan's somehow watching. In which case, if he was watching, I bet you he'd be here by now. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was just checking something out. <laughs> what was I looking up? I don't know. What I was looking up. Yeah. But uh, if he shows up, I mean, we'll, we'll give him another. Yeah, I saw the background image as well with the, uh, the guy. That's pretty funny. All right, four oh. pieces of this together. Yeah. So we'll give it another like, 10 minutes. Uh, you guys can ask some questions now, and uh, and I'd love to. And then we're going to head over to the Catalyst guys. Yes, we're, we're actually going to head out there, Doc. Hang with them. We're going to the Catalyst guys tonight. I think we have to cut across to their room and grab some stuff. Though, Do you have the key for that? Nope. That would be a message to die. Maybe I'll do that now. You don't know. You do that, and I'll talk. Cool. Um so we're actually after this, jealous, logistics, jealous, logistics, jealous, logistics. jealous, 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 jealous. We're going to be going to uh, the Catalyst uh, room where we're going to be playing Takedown. Dun, 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 dun. Takedown, 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 Takedown. 
I'm bringing a spare Sprawl Ops tomorrow to drop off. Sigh. Uh, the Legendary Box? You're going to be here tomorrow? Hangzies. Sweet. We'll hang out tomorrow. So, backer base and fans, Lynn Vandarians, you have any questions? I see that uh, we had a great number of people watching earlier. We're starting to dwindle down now, which means we're getting to the end of our uh, our thing. We just hit the one-hour mark. If, uh, if you guys enjoyed this Designer Diary, this is part one here at Origins Game Fair 2019. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and all of the fun stuff. And uh, we will have our part two to the Designer Diary in two days. So on Friday, I think that one was in the evening. You schedule at the same time. I think you also schedule at 845? 845. I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember. But that's what's in here. But wibbly wobbly. Wibbly wobbly wibbly wobbly wobbly. Estimated hopeful release time frame for Angel. We have said Halloween internally. Yeah, we're... we're I, I hope we can hit it. The game is testing quite well. It's very good. Uh, everything except the final art for the board and the items is done, basically. Um, most of the assets are um, so re recolored phone. homages to Buffy art. Because the games are compatible, we wanted them to look like they have the same art direction. But Angel is... Buffy is like kind of bright gold, light gray stone, and like um, purple. Angel is red, black, and like bronze. It's a really cool like twist on the Buffy uh, assets. Yeah. yeah, it can be soon. Um, we're, we're in good shape for it, actually. I mean, he's got a lot of, of illustration work to still do on I it. have to do the game board art for the city. If you've got Buffy, you know how insanely complicated he did, he did all that, that, that board by is. Hand. Yeah, that was all uh, Photoshop. Um, Enter yeah. the Helm Month will probably be earlier next year, yes. Yeah. yeah, we still have to do that. that. That game is a different, it's not it's not the same. It's a standalone Buffy game. Sorry, yeah. It's more of a what dungeon crawl adventure game? I it's a choose your own play. adventure dungeon crawl game. Yeah. Yeah, you get to choose uh you get to choose when when you are crawling through the dungeon and you're spawning things like you normally would through like like, like a betrayal game where you're flipping tiles and stuff. You're building Sunnydale school. And there's hallway tiles and then there's room tiles. Yeah. The hallway tiles are sort of generic where, where st stuff happens. And the room tiles are where I your think, plots I think happen. we had talked about doing um, some of the areas around the city as well in addition to the – Yeah, the you school. can go through the windows and go out to those those areas right. of the city. And if you go through a window and choose to go find one of the other locations, you can click one or two or pick one or two of the other tiles. I don't know what they click. Sure. Uh, well – but uh, but I mean like the the monsters and the creatures and things that spawn yeah. um, is is like a card that has choices on it and you can choose something worth noting about Enter the Hellmouth though is because it's a new Buffy product it came with a new art budget so and one of the interesting things we did and we were inspired by some people on BGG who have been talking about this since Buffy came out um, Buffy has eighteen monsters of the week. We, we really went through the show and picked all the really like iconic cool ones. But the Monsters of the Week cards in Buffy have generic art. There's a generic Monster of the Week token which shows a couple of the iconic ones. And then the cards just have this like static um, mon like compilation of them. Right. Uh, somebody on BGG made their own set using screen rips of standees for every Monster of the Week. And yep. we thought, that's really cool. If we're going to do a dungeon crawler style game and we want these Monsters of the Week as like the session you know, the end boss for the current session or episode, we should probably get art done for them. And we did. And we did. And what I think will happen is we're looking at re-releasing the Monster of the Week deck in a new product with some other stuff for Buffy. Um, so you'll have Monsters of the Week with their art attached. And their standees. And their standees. Um, so it will function as a mini expansion for Buffy that also upgrades all the Monster of the Week components. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited about that. The art's awesome. Um, and then after that... It was that... yeah? Did the art for? Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. And then after, after that, we've got um, an angel expansion, uh, Pylea. Yeah, we've talked about it. We haven't done that much design on it yet, other mm -hmm. than deciding when we. So we when we designed the angel core game, uh, I went through and looked at every single episode of the TV series. It's about 120 episodes mm -hmm. in total across the five seasons, and uh, we were picking and choosing which characters to put in the core box. And who we were going to save for later. Because it's usually... Buffy is 6 and 6 expansion core. 
And then uh, Angel will probably be the same. I think we'll have six expansion characters again. Yep. This is a pretty big cast, so it's not too not Whoa. too tough. Um, thanks, R2. Whoa. I, that's my phone. Uh, it, I, I silenced it for the one hour while we're doing the feed, and then when it goes and off. now it's reminding you you have stuff to do after this. Um, but, yeah, so we've got the, the six and six characters, but uh, we looked at all the episodes of the show because Angel has plot cards instead of Monsters of the Week. And they work a little bit differently, but they're sort of um, thematically episodes of the show. There's mm -hmm. some cool mechanical stuff that the plots do. It's a little bit a little bit crunchier than Buffy. There's a little bit more going on, a little yeah. more to manage. Oh, yeah. And the board itself is also a little bit different. Yeah, because you got the isolated Wolf from her heart section. Yeah, like Buffy's board, the most connected location on the board is like City Hall, and it's connected to four locations. Um, Angel's board is more like a ring with Wolfram and Hart in the middle, and it's connected to a whole bunch of things. Yeah, because yeah, Wolfram and Hart has three locations that are like connected to themselves, but two of them are isolated to Wolfram and Hart, so you have to go in to the Wolfram the and Hart office building. The attached to the conduit to the and conduit to the archives. To the white room, right? Yeah, yeah the white room. Yeah, it's Sorry. really cool. So if you're big Angel fans, and then of course we've got Palia. Yeah. We should talk about so yeah, we 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 strip we specifically chose some of the episodes of the show to make plots, and we specifically left some of them out of the base game because they will be in Pylea and they will have more characters. Yes, that are we will have that. we'll have uh, Grusalog, right? Grusalog. We'll have uh, Connor. We'll have yeah. Connor's an expansion character. An expansion right? character. Yeah. The um, core six are Kate, the cop. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. The, the, sorry, the core six are Angel, Angel Wesley. Gun, Gun Cor Fred, Fred, Cordelia, Cordelia, and Lauren. Lauren. And then after that, we've got uh, Grisolog, Connor, Kate, Doyle. Doyle, yeah, poor Doyle. Poor Doyle. Poor Doyle. And who are the other two? There's two more. We did we did contemplate Lila and uh, Lindsay, but we decided to make them allies. And, and or enemies, like we made them something. Yeah, it might end up only being those four. I have no. To there's two more. There's two more. Did I say Connor. Yeah. I think Lindsay was one of them, and I think we moved it. So yeah, it might end yes, up only they, being four more. Wow, how am I forgetting? However, that? keep in mind, Buffy now has twelve playable characters. Ilaria. Oh, that's right. Yes, Ilaria. 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 Yeah. And yeah. um. I forgot about Ilaria. Yeah, and Spike. Ghost Spike. Ghost, <laughs> go, maybe Ghost Spike. <laughs> Ghost Spike. In, in Corporeal Spike, he can't interact with anyone or anything. He can move a coffee cup with his special. Yeah, it, that's yeah. it. But we, we were talking about doing some cool stuff with that. With we, Ghost actually, Spike. you know what? Like Spike, Spike, we should have Spike, Ghost Spike becomes Corporeal at some point. But we should have it so that way oh, he's Ghost Spike. But if you achieve a certain thing, then you can go get real Spike from Buffy and put him in. I think we just make another Spike. We just make the Champion Spike. That yeah, we could do Champion Spike. Yeah. Because the one in, in the one in Buffy is good. We could vote. That'd be cool. We'll put a vote out there for people. This is also true. We could get get some feedback because yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, because we, we could do Raiden. <laughs> John Hutton's also asking us about Terminator Genesis and if there are any future expansions planned. Probably not. That, that game is. That's a one off. Uh, there's fall. There's uh, fall of Skynet. Fall of Skynet. That's the first. That's that's a great. We, we, expansion. we made. Frankly, we made a hundred fifty dollar game with thirteen scenarios. Like I just I. I choose to see those two boxes as glued together. Yes. Because like, because I designed them that way. Yeah. Like when we were working on them and I was doing the scenarios, we built them simultaneously. Yep. They were actually laid out for print in the same file and then split later on. Like they all so share templates make it and like anywhere for any bit financial. Uh, yeah. Proper financial. Yeah. They had almost this, they had different tile set and stuff. Oh, thanks, John. Ash versus Evil Dead. Term game. Terminator Genesis is my uh, I, I really enjoy Cowboy Bebop, but I think Terminator Genesis is the biggest, prettiest game I've worked on yet. That's the one that I'm really proud of. It's your baby. It kind of is. It's good. It's very good. I think it's really pretty. The art is phenomenal. Yeah, Steve uh, The layout is good. Um, the game is fun. And it's, we got to do some original stuff. I like it because it's, we got to create some original content. Mm -hmm. and we got to be soldiers. I think, I think the whole waypoint system we came up with for Terminator it's will probably system. make an appearance in another product somewhere. It needs to. Because um, that was a great little mechanic. Yeah, it needs to. It's really tying in the like adventure and the, the map exploration yeah, together. Yeah, right? it totally needs to. Uh, but, I mean, we've got our games. We've all got, I think, Dylan's is Sprawl Ops. And Evil Dead. Yeah, was, uh, yeah, I wonder which one he's like most excited for, you know? Probably Sprawl Ops. Sprawl Ops. 
Um, I think the other big secret project we're working on is actually the one he's super excited for. The one that he's been writing tons of fiction for. What's the nickname for it? We Did had a nickname for it. Did we? Yeah, it's like cheesecake or something. Mm, that wasn't it. We got we got interesting nicknames for for when we can't talk about games on license. Like for a while ago, we worked on some Street Fighter stuff. And we called it Jawbreaker. <laughs> so we kept saying, "Yeah, what's we'll he working on? Jawbreaker." All of our all of our code names are food related. Food related. Sour Can- keys, candy. We had one. Yeah, what was that one? Because there was another one we came up with for Star Trek. But that's now been. What was the Star Trek with sour sour keys? Sour keys was. I don't remember. Well, a whole bunch of these are before my time too. Golf stoppers? Oh, who knows? Okay, righto. Off to meeting. It was nice to be part of the real time for a change. Evil Dead too. Evil Dead too. Thanks, Jared. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna head out. I think. Uh, yeah, we got. Dylan, Dylan doesn't seem to respond. We got five minutes to get over to the catalyst section for our meeting. So we're gonna. We're going to call it a day, friends. Thank you so much yeah. for watching. Tune in for part two on Friday. Part two on Friday, and uh, we will talk then. With Dylan. Say hi to the Dylan CIG. Here. Yep, Dylan will be here, guaranteed. All right. Yeah. Take care, guys. Bye.